settle for the longer way. Zwei Flasche Whisky für die Zeit. Und ich date gern, aber du bist dabei. Mario geht fort, mal weg ist weit. Wann ich geh, wann ich geh. Ich werd dir fehlen, wann ich geh. Du seh schnell, wie was ich mach. Du seh schnell, wie ich lach. Ich werd dir fehlen, du watch seh. Hab krieg mein Zettel für den langen Weg. Du schenkst da aus mir für den Kahn. Es hat Mario und Dale ganz wunderbar. Hass ich dir den weißen Dank. Wann ich geh, wann ich geh. Ich werd dir fehlen, wann ich geh. Du seh schnell, wie was ich mach. Du seh schnell, wie ich lach. Ich werd dir fehlen, du watch seh. Well, 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 good oh, it leave a lie, it do is that Doug Vida. Hey, it's Doug, I'm back at you, that's me, right? Welcome back to another episode of PA Dutch Live. It is our May 2023 edition, and we got a doozy of a show for you coming at you tonight, everybody. We'll be sharing the screen and stage here with Carol Kantner. Uh, later on, talking about the Tulpa Haken settlement and their history and their big anniversary celebration this year. But in the meantime, if this is your first time joining us on the show, welcome, as we say in Pennsylvania Dutch, welcome. I'm glad that you took some time out of your busy life to join us either on the YouTube channel or Facebook or Twitter, wherever you're watching the show from. Please, dear friends, if uh, this is not your first time, Hello, hello, hello as well to all of you. I always start the same way every month. Whether you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Facebook, please put in the comment section where you are joining us from so I can give you guys some shout outs. I hope I don't sound a little clogged up tonight by I'm telling you, I don't know how it is where you guys live, but where I live right now, allergies are at peak. And I'm talking peak because there is pollen, tree pollen everywhere. My silver car looked yellowish today Whoa. so i noticed it a little bit i can kind of feel it i hope it doesn't come across that way but let's get to some shout outs here because there are people already throwing stuff at me oh my goodness edgar is joining us hello 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 aus virginia welcome edler uh edward our good edgar excuse me our good friend jeff marks is joining us from wolbachstedel and if you don't know where that is get yourself to western berks county and you'll find out Burkhardt is joining us. Good old, ich komme von Alabama. But my parents come originally from Pennsylvania. Well, there you go. Welcome. I interact with you a lot on Facebook, Burkhardt. I'm glad you're joining us here on the show tonight. Jewel, I never, you must be new. I'm glad that you're joining. Got the little waved hand going there. Gouda Ovid. We got Ethan, our good friend Ethan, joining us. Gouda Ovid from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, north of the border. Hopefully it's getting to feel like spring up there, up in the great white north <laughs> glad you're joining us <clears throat> our good friend norman jung he joins us every month highly hello aus steinbach am glan in germany thanks for staying up norman it's always good to see you here uh zerbert uh a eric from laureldale i know where that is that's burks county pennsylvania Dutch country for sure jewel is saying oh west michigan well thanks for joining us out there in west michigan jewel i have a really good friend that lives not too far from grand rapids um her name's Monica. If you know her, go say hi. Uh, Pete Z, our good friend, is joining us from joining us from Emaus, yeah, Emmaus, uh, out there in eastern Pennsylvania. Lutra Bay, Guter Oven, still awake, and Lautra in the Palatinate in Germany. Thanks for staying up, dear friend. Uh, Dolly Moyer joins us. She joins us almost every month. Hello from Fleetwood, beautiful Berks County, Pennsylvania. We got old Matt Pinella joining us from the state capital of Harrisburg, PA. Holy cow, Matt. Good to see you, my friend. Lenore is joining us from Lakeland, Florida. We are all over the map tonight, dear friends. My good friend Joyce Hass is joining us from Myers Tan. Joyce, it's so good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Zerbert says Laureldale as well. Okay, great. Boy, Laureldale is really well represented tonight. Brigitte, welcome. It's good. good to see you. You join us every month as well from beautiful Philadelphia. Hey, I got two people from Mon Etna in the same show. Sally, thanks for joining us. Do you know Jeff? He lives in your little town. How about that? And David B saying 
San Diego, back with you. It's so good to have you back. We got the West Coast represented. We got Germany represented. We got all over the place represented. This is great. I'm glad that you all took the time to join me tonight. And I'm looking forward to bringing you some really good stuff tonight because it's going to be a good one. Give me one second here. I need to do this. And now let's talk about what's coming up tonight, my dear friends. Well, as I advertised, it is going to be Carol Kantner uh, talking about the Tulpa Hawken Settlement 300th anniversary. And of course, we'll have some Pennsylvania Dutch poetry and a song as always. But we got some dates to remind you of. And we'll be talking more about this event here in just a couple minutes. But one of the things in this year of celebration that the Tulpa Hawken Territory has is coming up and it is sunday the 21st of may that's this sunday at the altalaha lutheran church their music dialect and clothes carol's going to be talking about this uh here in a little bit so we'll come back to this but keep marking your calendar on june 24th our good friends at historic schaferstown are going to have their annual cherry fair and folk art craft show can't wait to uh dig into some cherry pie i love cherry pie who doesn't like kasha boy cherry pie with a little bit of ice cream. Ay, yama, that's good eating, isn't it? But there's a lot of cool things in Schaeferstown. If you've never been, this is a great opportunity to go check out all the cool things that are going on there and the craft show and the cherry fair coming at you. Uh, we got Pennsylvania Dutch classes coming up again. Our good friends at the Burks History Center. We've talked a lot about them over the last year because they've been doing this and the turnout is still crazy. They're getting crazy numbers of people interested. These classes are both in person and and virtual. So no matter where you live, you could join one of these classes. Just check out the Burke's History Center's website. It's burkeshistory.org, I think, or burkeshistorycenter.org. If you search Burke's History Center, it'll come up and then you can find and learn more. They got a new set of classes starting at the end of this month. It is not too late to register, so please do. Hey, I got a couple other people joining the show. My Anna, 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 Guda over Liebe, Doug aus Oderstadt, Palz. Anna is staying up really late. Anna is, is, uh, I have, I have what I consider a few German mothers that ha I have met in my travels to Germany, uh, who I consider my German mothers. Anna is one of those. Hello, Mama. I hope everything is great there in Otterstadt. Thank you for staying up tonight. Jakey Peters, he joins us often also from Chesapeake, Virginia. And also Wilhelm, Guda Numi Dog, come from Georgia. My gross mother is from Lancaster County. So joining us from Georgia and his grandmother is from Lancaster County. For those of you that can't read Pennsylvania Dutch, good stuff coming on. We'll stick with the Burke's History Center. I announced this last month, but it's not too late. They are doing some uh, some youth summer camps that are geared towards history, but also towards Pennsylvania Dutch stuff. So if you have a child or a grandchild or a niece or a nephew that you think would be interested in this is in the greater Berks County area, please check out Burke's History Center's website for more information about their junior historian camp. Of course, it's coming up really soon. The 1st through the 9th of July is the annual Kutztown Folk Festival. You can buy your tickets online ahead of time, or you can always get your tickets at the gate. It is a great, well, it's not, it is not a great, it is the greatest Pennsylvania Dutch Folk Festival out there. I personally will be there performing a couple days, the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. You can catch me two times each of those days. Look forward to seeing some of you, but there's a lots and lots of great entertainment, seminars, craftsmen, artisans, awesome food. Please check out their website for more information. Just look up kutztownfestival.com and you can purchase your tickets there. You can also learn about the entertainment schedule, et cetera, et cetera. We'll be talking a lot more about the Kutztown Folk Festival in next month's episode of PA Dutch Live. Uh, and a couple things I do want to pay attention or let's make you guys aware of. If you're planning on going to the Folk Festival, there's a couple opportunities that you can do uh, that you have to pay extra for or sign up in advance. One thing, our good friend, Terry Berger, a dear friend of mine, every year he runs the summer kitchen and does live Pennsylvania Dutch cooking over a wood stove. Uh, and the food is delicious, but you do have to sign up ahead of time. And it's very limited. Eight seats per sitting. They have a 1 p.m. lunch and a 4 p.m. dinner. It's $20 per person, but you have to sign up ahead of time. So if that's something you'd be interested in, definitely check out the, the um, Folk Festival's website. This year, they're also doing some folk, some hex sign workshops. This is new this year. And um, some Scherenschnitte, which is scissor cutting, paper cutting workshops as well. So there's a lot of opportunities for some really cool things. But you do have some of this stuff. You do have to either uh, reserve a place in advance or pay in advance so that you can get on the list. So just 
be aware of that as you're getting, if you're planning on coming to the folk festival, there's two other things that they're doing, which I think are really cool. They're also going to be doing what they're calling the back roads and barn star country ride, uh, essentially in a motor coach, uh, led by Patrick Dunmore, the director of the cultural heritage center there, Pennsylvania German cultural heritage center. They're going to be doing, uh, multiple, uh, tours on the 3rd of July only 40 seats per bus, $15 per person, uh, going around the greater Berks County area, particularly looking at farms that have hex signs. And, you know, he wrote the book on them or one of the books on them, I should say. So that's a really cool opportunity. And also this new this year is also the Rosemary house herbal vinegar and salt workshop. Um, I don't know what that's all about, but it sounds like sounds pretty cool actually. But again, you can check the folk festivals website to learn more about those awesome, awesome opportunities. The last couple of months, I've been sharing with you a comic strip written by our good friend Stefan Boisel in Germany, uh, Hannah on Henrietta. I'll translate this one again for everybody. I'll read the Pennsylvania Dutch and then I'll translate it <clears throat> for those of you who don't understand Pennsylvania Dutch. So we have the two children and the dad sitting there and uh, the grandfather. And the boy says, Grandpa, Grika man cuts. Sai so good. So, Grandpa, can we get a cat? Please. And the next cell. Nee, for sure, net and cut, schaff nix is alles for am fresse und leid der ganz dog jush rum. My grandfather says, no, absolutely not. A cat doesn't do anything. It's always eating and it just lays around the whole day. And the voice from the kitchen says, on my hen schon epa a sella chop do it. And we already have somebody that do that does all those jobs. So ha ha ha, good one, good jokes on Grandpa there. I thought that's pretty funny actually. One last thing, every month we do a salute in our hee haw style, uh, and this time I'm giving the shout out to Wummelsdorf, the metropolis of Wummelsdorf, Berks County. That's in western Berks County, actually in the Tulpahocken settlement. Um, and uh, founded in 1762, population of the, the last number I could find, 2,810 people. So salute to Wummelsdorf. Um, okay, what's next? Well, we're having some, I have to admit, we're having some technical difficulties right now with our guest. Um, I might have to stall a little bit for you guys. Oh, it's like magic. I said it and there she is. So it is time to move on. This um, it's, it's all planned people. It's all planned. Um, our guest this month is Carol Diefenbach Kantner, a good friend of mine. Actually, we're distantly related. Uh, and she is going to be talking as promised about the Tulpahocken settlement. So let's bring Carol into the stream. Hello, Carol. Hello and welcome from Beautiful downtown Burnville. I actually you, got to say that live this month. This, Yeah, you did. Usually you type it in the comment section. Carol, it's so good to see you. Uh, before we start, because I'm sure there's people looking at their screen saying, what is over her shoulder? <laughs> I thought I'd change my background here a little bit. Um, actually, I just turned my computer around so that you could see what is sitting in the corner of my living room. Uh, behind me, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the Diefenbox and uh, the fact that they made pipe organs uh, for a few generations. I am honored to own one of them. And this is a David Diefenbach pipe organ. It was built as, this is not a church organ. Many of the other organs were bigger this is like by far the smallest one. Uh, it was meant for a home. Um, David was the third generation of pipe organ builders. And uh, it's estimated that this was built around 1830. Awesome. And it still works, right? And it still works. Yep. That's uh, awesome. Just one note. you, uh, Many of you may be able to see this at the end of the year in that I've decided um, to donate it to the Pennsylvania German Cultural Heritage Center in Kutztown. So this will um, be getting a new home by the end of the year. I'm sure that was a hard decision to make, but at the same time, you know that it's going to good hands and somewhere Absolutely. where many people can see it, where many Absolutely. people can see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Carol, uh, I'm glad that we got to share that little bit of history, but we got a lot of history to talk about tonight. And that is this 
Tulpa Hawkins Settlement. We have people joining us tonight online that definitely know what that is. We also have people joining us that probably have no idea what that is and why we're celebrating it this year. So I'm going to turn the, the, the stage is yours. The microphone is yours. Uh, and I got the pictures all loaded. All you need to do is tell me, Doug, go to the next slide and I'll gladly click away. Okay. Well, we probably won't get to the slides until we talk about the events of this year. I'd like to start by talking about um, the Germans that came here and settled this area. Um, I grew up in in uh, Berks County, Tulpahocken Township. I went to Tulpahocken schools. Um, and um, I'm as Pennsylvania Dutch, I think, as you probably can get. Um, even though uh, one time it, when I was in college, I worked for a summer at the gift house at Roadside America. And some tourists came through there and asked where they could go to see Pennsylvania Dutch people. And I kind of went, ta-da. And they said, yeah, but where is your uniform? And I realized then, of course, that they thought that Pennsylvania Dutch were all Amish. And I yeah. said, no, I am a Pennsylvania Dutch Lutheran girl and <laughs> um, and will be forever. Yeah, um, right. Anyway, so this story, um, I, I was telling Doug the other day, I am by no means a historian. I was a math major in school. I couldn't remember dates or anything. So I do have notes so that I can do this story a little bit of justice. Um, the, the slide that Doug showed a little while ago um, was a little booklet that was actually written by my uncle Ray Diefenbach and, um, and another gentleman who has some Diefenbach in his background, although I did not know him. Um, and I will start out by telling uh, some of you that are listening now know this story much, much better than I do. And maybe what I'm going to say might be a little different than what you know and so on. But it's one of those things where not much was written down about all these things. You can get little dates and and so on from um, different records and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, there, there wasn't the definitive book of this passage from Germany to the Tulpahocken. However, this is my background in, this is my connection to Germany and coming from, through New York down to the Tulpahocken territory. And this is my seventh great grandfather, Johann Conrad Diefenbach. Now there are some things Oh, let me just say one more thing about my Uncle Ray. You know, people will often say, oh, do you do genealogy? Have you traced your family back? And I always say, I didn't have to because I had Uncle Ray. He was the historian um, in our family. And, um, and he has traced it back as far as anyone I think will ever get. And I think that is to Johann Conrad Diefenbach. And I will tell you that we know that in 1702, so what I'm going to tell you is based on this booklet, which again might be a little different than your story, whatever. But this is what I know from this booklet. Um, in 1702, Johann Conrad Diefenbach lived in Wieslach, Germany. Um, he was a cooper meaning that he made barrels. That was his skilled craft. Um, he was a widower, but was raising two children, and his mother lived with him. Um, anyway, um, in 1698, the, um, the French had come through, and they were always coming through there and destroying everything. And they pretty much destroyed the whole town of Wieslach. They left a few buildings standing. Um, they did leave the church. How, however, they destroyed all the records. 
Now, a lot of times genealogists and so on will go to church records to trace back people and events and so on. But, you know, we know that he lived there in 1702 and those few minor details that I already gave you. But from there, the church records were destroyed. So we have no idea what came before him. Um, in Germany, Diefenbach apparently is a very familiar name. There are even towns called Diefenbach. Uh, and I believe it would translate to what deep Creek or yeah, deep, deep Creek. Stream. Yes. Right. Anyway. Yeah. So that's what we know about him um, at that point. But we do know that in, yeah, on Christmas day of 1702, he met, he remarried and he remarried a, a person uh, who was a Calvinist that had come her, she and her family had come from Switzerland because of religious persecution. They came to Germany. And so he married her. And um, the last church record in Wieslach said that on May 15th, 1709, Johann Conrad and his household left for America. So that was when they left Wieslach. Um, now, why, why would they want to go to America? Well, they were tired of being uh, totally devastated every few years by the different wars that were going on. Uh, a lot of the older people there remember the 30 years war that um, was earlier in the 1600s. And to top it all off, in the beginning of 1709, they had like the coldest winter on record in Germany. Um, cattle froze, uh, people froze. It said that birds froze midair, um, you know, and so a lot of people died then and so on. Um, so they saw when they heard about America, they saw that as a ray of hope. And how did they hear about America? You might wonder. I mean, they didn't see it in the local newspaper, I don't think. Um, but William Penn apparently had German ancestry and he had visited Germany and he was very impressed by uh, these farmers and their skilled craftsmen and so on and, and their work ethic. And he thought these are just the kind of people that I would like to come live in Pennsylvania, um, in his land in Pennsylvania. So he um, extended an invitation to them. Also, Queen Anne of England um, had German relatives, and she also extended an invitation to her colonies. Now, um, Johann Conrad figured if he could get to England, then Queen Anne would put him on a ship and ship him over to America. I mean, he thought it was going to be that. Well, I guess he didn't think it was going to be that simple, but that was his thought process. So we know that they arrived in England on June 11th of 1709, along with what Queen Anne thought hundreds of people would be coming. But instead of hundreds of people, thousands of people came and then they didn't know what to do with them all. Well, they sent a whole um, like thousands of them to ink to Ireland. Um, but uh, there was a something called the board of trade and their plan, they devised this plan to send them to one of Queen Anne's colonies in New York um, and make tar from pine trees which would be useful for the British Navy. They needed it for their ships. So uh, there was already a small group of Germans up the Hudson in New York. So uh, that was the plan. They were going to send these people uh, to New York. So they had 10 ships and they loaded these people on the ships in December of 1709. But the ships didn't go anywhere until April of the following year. So um, during that time, many people got sick and died. 
Uh, there were orphan children, um, and they were so afraid that that these this group would be torn apart that as people died, they remarried each other, you know, so that there'd be intact family groups that would be going. Um, anyway, they arrived in New York on June, in June of 1710 and went to a place up the Hudson called Livingston's Manor. And there they set up villages just like they had lived at in, in, the, in Germany. And they didn't have to worry about too much because Queen Anne had promised to send food and other things that they would need. So um, they thought that would get them off the ground and they wouldn't have to worry about things like that. Well, um, what the thing is, they were asked to make tar from pine trees. Did these German people know how to make tar? They had no idea what they were doing. So that was really totally unfamiliar. Um, and it turned out the place where they were, they they had trees that weren't really the right kind of trees to make tar. Um, now, Johann Conrad, he was in a good place in that he was a cooper. They needed him to continue to make barrels. Because even if they got tar, they needed somewhere to put it. So he was very busy making making tar. Um, in 1712, things uh, started falling apart. There were so many people in England that, that uh, Queen Anne couldn't send supplies like she had been. And, and the, uh, the governor of New York went into debt on this project because the, the tar business was not working out. And so they finally told these Palatines that they could move anywhere they wanted um, so that they could find work. They kind of released them there. Um, but he wanted them to stay in New York. So um, at some point, um, they had heard from the Iroquois Indians that lived there, um, and they had land around the Shohari. So, uh, they thought they, that they were, again, very friendly, these Indians, and they had a good relationship with them. Um, for one thing, they both hated the French, and, um, also, uh, one thing that strengthened their relationship is, you know, you probably heard of Conrad Weiser. Well, Conrad Weiser Sr., um, father of the Conrad Weiser that we know, um, asked the Iroquois chief if his son Conrad Weiser could come live with them because he wanted to learn the language and learn everything he possibly could about the Indians. And this Indian chief um, agreed to let him come live there. And, um, and that was so beneficial later on when, when, uh, the Germans needed to, um, communicate with, with the various Indians they ran into. Um, to make a long story short here, um, they did go to the Shohari, um, and the, they learned that when, when the Indians, Indians thought that giving, they defined giving something to someone as lending it to them. So the German families thought they were working to, um, get this land from the, uh, from the Indians and, And actually, uh, they they had already given that land to two other groups. So that wasn't working out. So they decided they needed to move on. And Governor Keith was the governor of Pennsylvania. And he renewed his invitation for them to come 
live in in his territory. Um, so they send out scouts to check out the land to see if it would be appropriate and and so on. And they decided the best route would be by water. So the Iroquois Indians actually helped them um, take trees down. I think they were chestnut trees and they made dugouts and canoes out of them. They got to a place where they could enter the Susquehanna River and they floated down the Susquehanna River to the Swatara and then they traveled on to the Topahawken Territory. Um, now, not everything could come via water. They had to bring their cattle and the horses and so on. So that had to come by land. But in early spring, um, well, in, no, wait, I'm sorry. Um, in April of 1723, um, 20 canoes, rafts, and dugouts started their trip down the Susquehanna. It took more than 10 days and they went 300 miles. Um, and again, not, not much was written about this. They assume that Iroquois, they might have even come along with them on the trip because um, they could have helped them set up their overnight camps and catch fish and shoot game and so on so that they'd have people uh, things to eat that people would be taken care of. And they arrived in May on May 13th of 1723. Oh man, that was only four days ago, Carol. We're almost to the day, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the other day I was reading about this and it was like, wow, I was reading about them leaving on May 15th and I was reading this on May 15th. Yeah, it's crazy when, it, when that stuff happens. Yeah, it was crazy. So and three, I, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, not all the families from... New York came at the same time. The first group consisted of 15 families and they came in 1723. I know that Johann Conrad came in 1725. And then I know the Wisers and some other people, I believe, came in 1728. So not everybody came at the, at the same time. And um, then when they got here, they sent a petition to the governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Keith asking that the titles of the land be cleared so these families could purchase the land where they settle. And um, there was still a little bit of trouble now with the Lenape Indians, um, but they came to um, an agreement and the people were able to purchase the land and, um, and that's how they settled the Tulpahocken. And now um, the, I wouldn't say that these names of the families. I mean, if you lived in Berks County, you will know these names. Um, the first 15 families, Onspock, Fisher, Fiddler, Schott, Lance, Walborn, Zerby, Sheets, Christ, Schaefer, Scharf, Saab, Pacht, and Reed. Yeah. Uh, and that was all different spellings of Reeds. Um, and then later, Burgers, Brown, um, Diefenbach, Emmerich, Feig, Fari, Klopp, Koble, Stump, and the list goes on. Um, and again, these are very familiar names. Um, I, I found this map for everybody that isn't maybe familiar with the area that we're talking about now, but this is uh, the diamond shape is Berks County, uh, the county that I'm from and where Carol lives. But the Topahawken settlement, this area where these Germans that came down the Susquehanna from New York, where they settled, is in the green shaded area. And those are all our townships. Uh, so you can see it's the western it's the western part of Berks County uh, mm -hmm. and also down into Lebanon County. Right. Uh, we have uh, a couple count, a couple townships there in Lebanon County that, that mm -hmm. make up the quote unquote mm -hmm. Tulpahawken territory. So for mm -hmm. people that are familiar with Pennsylvania, this maybe helps you a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, but for if, those of you that are not, I mean, helps a little bit there, too. If if you're familiar with the towns around Berks County, uh, the, the northern border of the ter Tulpahawken territory was the Blue Mountain above Bethel and Charlottesville. Um, the southern border was the South Mountain around Schaeferstown, which is Lebanon County. Uh, east On the east, we had Hamburg, 
and over to Warnersville and on the west, Myerstown, which is Lebanon County. So that's a pretty big area. It was. It, it, well, it is. You're right. It You're is. right. 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 Anyway. So this this organization that has come about to decide, hey, it's been 300 years since these forefathers made this treacherous journey first from the, the old country from Germany across the ocean. And then we, we learned about, you know, they were in New York for a while and they encountered some difficulties there and then finally made their way to Pennsylvania and into Berks County and into parts of Lebanon County in 1723. When that first group arrived, just like you said, this, you know, th this spring, 300 years. So there is a group called, well, I don't know what you guys, I guess you're calling yourselves just the 300th anniversary celebration um, that have planned a year long celebration of this history. Can you talk a little bit about this group and what you guys are doing? Sure. Um, about two and a half years ago, um, this was all under um, a woman by the name of Dolores Hill. I know that some of the people listening know who that is. Uh, she's actually the president of Andalhe Heritage Center and um, um, a member of Altalaha Lutheran Church. Decided we need to we need to plan something. So we contacted all the historical groups within the Topahawken territory, uh, like Andalhe Heritage Center, Topahawken Settlement Historical Society, the Heidelberg Heritage, and uh, there's a group in Schaeferstown I know also. We contacted all of them, plus kind of put the word out, you know, we want to form this committee to, to plan the this year long celebration. And um, we had a pretty good response. So um, there, there's a core group of us, I'm going to say like 10 to 12 people that have that regularly meet and have planned, um, have planned these different events. Now, some of them have already happened, but we have many more coming up. And that's what I'd like to tell you about. And uh, I will say that we had our first event um, on Saturday, March 18th. It was at Christ Lutheran Church in, in Stoutsburg. And we had over 235 people there. Now, going into this, you don't know. I mean, we advertised and so on. But you don't know if you're going to get 50 people or, or what. We set up, I believe, for 100. And people kept coming and coming and coming. They pulled chairs out of every nook and corner of Christ Lutheran Church, and um, there were about 200 chairs set up. But there were there was quite um, uh, a standing crowd in the back as well. But we had such an excellent day. Dolores Hill spoke. Um, we had someone else speak about the history. Linda Manwiller. This is Luann Reese who portrayed. Uh, Anna Maria Koble, one of the women that would have made this journey, that was excellent because you got to hear what she went through um, as to moving her family and so on. Um, and, and then finally, uh, we had music and entertainment by Keith Brinsenhoff. And he had the group singing. Uh, I believe the picture that that you have there is. Do you have another picture? No, I don't have the one no. of Keith. Okay, so that's sorry. all right. That's all right. Um, the whole group sang Schnitzelbank, and you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, we had a great time that day. There were many displays set up in the room. Uh, we have things for sale like T-shirts and turtles. Um, as Joyce, I saw Joyce's comment yeah. there, uh, the uh, Topahawken actually is a Lenape Indian term, and it means land of the turtles. Um, so the, this is the year of the turtles for us. <laughs> so everything we have is is turtle that you see our, our logo up there. Anyway, uh, the next event was on April 29th, and this was a, a church tour. This was a self-directed church tour. I think there were 14 churches. These are all congregations that have existed since before 1800. Um, 
And so there are a lot of those churches, as you see, we had 14 that were willing to open their doors and, and give tours, have people come and visit. Um, I know I was at Altalaha, I played the organ and um, Dolores spoke about the church and so on. We had like 45 people come that day. I know that Christ, um, I forget how many they had, excuse me. Uh, Freedens Lutheran in Burnville had uh, 20 some people there. There, people were mostly interested in seeing the stained glass windows. And there, all the guides were dressed in period costumes and, and so on. There, there are lots of things to see. There are many historic organs in this group of churches. And the good news is, I mean, there's no way you could have seen all those churches in one day. So we have it also coming up on October 14th. Uh, again, that's 1 to 5 in the afternoon. You can visit any of those churches, and um, I encourage you to do so. Our next event is coming up this this coming Sunday, and we call it our trilogy at Altalaha. Um, there is music. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Diefenbach organs because we have uh, this beautiful instrument there. It's an 1817 uh, Christian Diefenbach organ. He was the second generation organ builder. This organ was built for this church, which was his church. And this is Altalaha Lutheran Church. It sits right on the main street of Raresburg. You can't miss it. Um, and um, after the music, there will be um, a little church service, um, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch Church Service. And I know that the message um, if you can put in that next uh, picture of the front of the church, the message is about going to be about the German words that are above the front of the church. Uh, Der Harrison Seinem Heiligen Temple, et sei for ihm stille alle Welt. Uh, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the world be still before him. Um, and that will be the message that day. It's not going to be a full-blown church service. Well, there will be a short message. I know we're doing the Lord's Prayer in, in German. Um, the Stolpach Sanger Corps um, is going to sing a couple of songs. If you don't know about them, that's a Pennsylvania Dutch choir that has existed for over 30 years. And I'm the accompanist for that choir. We haven't been very active since COVID, but um, anyway. Uh, the next event after that is actually, this isn't, there are two events before this one that is on your screen. The next one will be on June 24th, and that's going to be a fun day in Mount Etna. It's Pennsylvania German Day. It's going to be from 2 to 8 in the afternoon on June 24th. There's going to be, it's going to be at the carnival grounds at at mount etna there's going to be food and games there are going to be tortoise and hare races there are going to be vendors there are going to be scavenger hunts and the toad creek ramblers are going to be there from three to five also the pennsylvania the pennsylvania farm bureau is going to have their immersion lab there and that's that's a very interesting thing for both children and adults the next thing is in July. And in July, we have a bus trip to show Harry, New York. Um, that's July 26, 27, 28. We are desperately trying to fill that bus. So if you're interested at all, I encourage you to um, actually, I can give you a phone number 610-488-1769. That is a lovely woman named Charlotte Moyer. And she would be happy to take your reservation or tell you all about that bus trip. Um, then on August 5th, we have a very nice band concert. It's the Keystone Band of Raresburg. They've been in existence since 1888. And there's an ice cream social along with that. And that's from 5 to 8 p.m. Then again in October, we have the church tours that I told you about before. 
Some other things that we're doing um, this year, very quickly, uh, Dolores Hill is a retired elementary teacher. She's been going to the local schools and libraries to talk about this and uh, gives them coloring sheets of turtles and so on. Um, all of the heritage centers have been having information in the newsletters. We've been having speakers and so on. Dolores has written stories called Tilly and Tully, the turtles. And they've been published in the fish wrapper. If you're, I don't know how far and wide that goes, but pretty far and wide. Um, we're selling redware, redware plates. We have, again, we have t-shirts, bags, and turtles. Um, and we have two contests going on. One is to design a turtle of any kind. It can be a painting. It can be, we have a quilted turtle. We have turtles made out of old car parts and all kinds of things. And then the other contest is to paint a picture of the show Harry journey and those things can be brought to any event and at the end of the year um there will be prizes awarded well i think it's wonderful that you guys you know this isn't something that happens you know when 300 years is a really long time especially for us here in the united states for our german viewers that are watching of course 300 years is a blink in their country's history but for us you know 300 years is, is something to truly celebrate and the people that you know what we didn't really get into a lot of the story was that these people once they moved to the tulpa Hocken, they flourished they oh, they yeah. they had massive farms. They they mm -hmm. contributed towards the American Revolution when the revolution came out. We talked about Conrad Weiser, of course, probably the most famous of the Tulpa Hocken settlers in, in that in that time period. So there's a lot to celebrate. It's not this story of just a couple of families that made an arduous trip. It, it's also what they did once they got here to Pennsylvania and how they expanded and grew uh, both in number, but also in, in wealth and in their contributions to our country. So I think it's great that you guys <clears throat> took up this, this, this banner. It's not easy to plan a year's long <laughs> worth of events. Uh, and like you said, you don't know, are people going to come to you? You're going to put all this work into them, but you're already seeing that th there are people interested in this. Oh, yeah. And I will say to anyone out there that wants to learn more, uh, the Tulpa Hawken settlement has information on their Facebook page. Um, and you can definitely stay up to date with them there. Uh, but like Carol said, there's, there's, if, if you, there's stuff throughout the year that you can check out and a lot of really great history to celebrate and to learn more about this story. Heck, maybe many of you listening tonight or watching tonight are descendants in, you know, or have these people in your family tree somewhere mm -hmm. that were part of this group. So, Carol, I just want to thank you for coming on tonight and telling us this story and sharing this with us. As you have events coming up, your group, I will, of course, continue to advertise them for you guys on my social media and on upcoming episodes of PA Dutch Live for sure. Um, so, I just, again, thanks, Carol. There's a lot, to, to, there's one, a lot to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. Can I just have one clarification? Sure. Uh, you said Topa Hawkins Settlement. There is a Topahawken Settlement Historical oh, Society. This is the Topahawken Territory 300th anniversary. And we have our own Facebook page. So if you want to catch up or find out about anything we talked about tonight, you can, um, you can check out that Facebook page. If you have questions, send us a message on that page. And um, I will be one of the few, uh, few people to answer those questions for you. And um, I hope you support our events. I'm sure they will. And thank you, Carol, for, for clearing that up. I did make that mistake. And after I said it, it was too late. To, I couldn't take the word back. Settlement territory. Oh, ah, all these words. <laughs> but thank you so much, Carol. Uh, like I said, I'll keep pro I'll keep promoting what you guys are doing. Um, I have family buried at Altalaha Lutheran Church. So I have connections to this territory in this area as well. So it's part of my history. And I'm so glad that you were able to come up this week on the show and, and share this story with all of the viewers. Thank you, Doug. Hey, Mox Good Carol. Mox Good. Hey, everybody, how about that? How about that? Good stuff going on out there in Western Berks County. Um, it is time for us to have our 
dip into the Pennsylvania Dutch language. This month, I bring you the poem Immoy. Immoy by the one and only, I'm going to take myself out of the image here so you can see a little bit better, John Bermelin. John Bermelin, one of the greatest Pennsylvania Dutch writers out there. I love his stuff. Anyone that knows anything about Pennsylvania Dutch literature, poetry, prose, you know John Bermelin. From 1873 to 1950. Here is his poem, In Moy, in May. The Pennsylvania Dutch is on the left. That's what I'll read. You can follow along on the right if you don't understand Pennsylvania, because I have the English there in italics. Here we go. In Moy, do kumma di bleda und blumme. Was is es doch immer im Moy so she? Es ist alles do freilich, ma fühlt sich so selig. Es macht dem en freid von aus zu gay. Die Fäckel tun singe, die Felder sind gri, die Fenster mais hupse am Rickel dat hi, es streichelt der Wind, so dat ich die Beem, die Ime, sie hole der Honig schon heim. Die Fleder mais kumme, die Moi käfer brumme, der Fockel baut's nest und legt sei oi. Es ist alles blessierlich und des ist nadierlich im freiliche, seeliche, glückliche Moi. What a great poem. I love May. May is a great month. And our good friend, John Bermelin, he told us about all the good things happening in May here in Pennsylvania. Wherever you live, maybe it's a little different because of where you live. But at least here in southeastern PA, that's a pretty apt description of, of the great month of May. So there's a little bit of Pennsylvania Dutch for you, everybody. Hey, it's time for a little music. How about a little music? If you follow me on YouTube or on Facebook, you probably saw me post this last Sunday. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my good friend Chris and I, the Broken Spokes, we were able to get together and, and make a little music and record some videos. And I wanted to share one with you guys tonight. And that is one that we just recorded. It is a traditional Pennsylvania Dutch folk song called Da Kasha Bomb, The Cherry Tree. Uh, let me share my tab here with you guys so this song and i'll intro it in the video so you'll hear a little bit better what it's about uh and then i'll just let you play it it's all in pennsylvania dutch um but i think you'll understand what's going on enjoy dear friends Hey, Ali, I thought the Pogan Spokes are back. Did I say the, the Pogan Spokes? The Broken Spokes are actually, we want to throw some Pennsylvania Dutch music at you. This first song, well, this song is not the first song. This song is Pogan called... Pogan Spokes sounds Pogan like a broken tire. Then. That's all right. Hey, oh. the Kasha Bomb, the cherry tree, this is all about a house that's in pretty bad shape. Doesn't have a roof, doesn't have any glass in its windows. Guy's in bad shape, but we're going to sing about it anyway. Well, if the house doesn't have a roof, then that means the cherry trees are falling right into his kitchen for me. I don't think I'd want that, though. Oh. The Kasha Bomb. The Kasha Bomb. That river, that river, who the Kasha Bomb steht, that is who the big dog Fritz is nigrate. Sing to la la, to la la, to la la lay. Sing to la la, to la la, to la la lay. That have ich ein Haus und Ruf ist kein Dach. Das hat so ein Schlaf mich der Schreiner gemacht. Dann habe ich ein Fenster und drin ist kein Glas. Wann ich do nas guck, verfrier ich mein Nas. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le. Dann habe ich ein Stück und drin ist kein Wort. Wann ich do nai will, dann ist es ein Schand. Dann habe ich ein Speicher und Luft ist kein Steg. Wann ich do Luft will, dann weiß ich kein Weg. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le. Ein Bett und drin ist kein Strick. Du leg ich mit I und verbreck ich mein Rick. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le. Sing zu la la, zu la la, zu la la le.
Well, how's that for you people? A good has a little bit of an Irish ring to it, that song. I know it does. Uh, I don't know how old that song is. I know that I sang it as a kid growing up. And when you go to events in Pennsylvania Dutch country, you'll hear it from time to time. Der Kaschabaum. Der Kaschabaum. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, dear friends. Hey, it's that time of the show for me to tell you, you can get your own clothes with Pennsylvania Dutch stuff on it. Don't forget, you can visit our Zazzle shop. Took this picture a couple months ago back in March. This lovely kids here wearing their Pennsylvania Dutch themed shirts. You too can, just like our good friends here as well. Please, if you are interested in getting your own, you know what to do, right? Just go to, drum roll, Zazzle.com backslash PA Dutch stuff. Makes great gifts. I had someone contact me just the other day hey duck i need to get a shirt from for mother's day what's that address and i gladly send them the link so if you got a birthday coming up or father's day is in june hey why not surprise dad with a pennsylvania dutch shirt maybe your dad's usually running around the house saying "Dunna vera," because the kids aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing well you can get him a shirt that says "Dunna vera." why not why not why not people hey also don't forget if you like what we're doing here and you'd like to financially support the channel i would greatly appreciate it you can do that by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com backslash doug maidenford all money raised goes towards the upkeep of the channel just a month ago i put out a campaign to raise money for wireless microphones that i can do some more stuff out in the field like at the Kutztown folk festival for example this coming summer and the my my dear friends opened up their wallets and sent me some money and i will let everyone know we reached our goal and i have those new wireless microphones in hand they came uh, about a week ago so they will be utilized this summer for sure so i would like to say gross dunk for die unterstützung many thanks for your support to these people who recently have bought me a coffee david hunsinger band luke our good friend norman jung Big GZ2, the Hagamans, and Christopher Arnold. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. I really, really appreciate it. And if you don't want to buy me or buy me any coffee, that's fine too. Just keep watching the videos and tell your friends to subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow along on our Facebook page, PA Dutch 101, or over on Instagram, same thing, PA Dutch 101, or on Twitter, same thing, PA Dutch 101, and you too will be getting the freshest Pennsylvania Dutch content on the interwebs. Mark your calendars, dear friends. I'll be coming at you earlier than normal. Make note, because of a family vacation that I'm going on in the middle of June, Pennsylvania Dutch Live for June will be a little earlier. It will be June the 6th, which real quick, I don't know if that's a Wednesday. I think it's a, that is a Tuesday. Normally we have the show on a Wednesday, but because of a conflict schedule with my guest, it's going to be Tuesday, June 6th at 6 p.m. I'll be advertising it on the YouTube channel, of course, but if you're a person that likes to have things on the calendar, please do that. And I will be welcoming on and return guest Heather Zimmerman, the director of the Kutztown Folk Festival. We're going to be talking about the 2023 edition of the Folk Festival. She's going to be telling us about all the new changes, uh, stuff that you can experience or things that you will be able to do while at the Folk Festival this year, uh, including entertainment, uh, all of the seminars, the quilt barn, all the stuff that you love, and some new things too that will be happening this year. So I can't wait to have Heather on the show next month to tell you all about this upcoming Kutztown Folk Festival. So please mark your calendars and be ready to join me on June the 6th. My dear friends, it's been so great being with you again this month. I can't wait to be with you here in just a couple weeks on the 6th of June. As we move into the summer, there's lots of great stuff going on in Pennsylvania Dutch country for you to get out there and experience, connect with our culture, our language, our history. Go to one of the Tulpahawken Territory events. Go to the Folk Festival. Go to the Cherry Fair. A lot of local churches are going to be coming up on Strawberry Festival season. Those are always fun events to go to, too. There will be something for you to do where you can connect with your Pennsylvania Dutch heritage culture culture, language, roots, history, all that good stuff. Mark your calendars and be at one of these things. Get out there. If you see me at one of these things, darn it, you better come up and say hello and shake my hand because I'm going to be out and about this summer filming some stuff for the YouTube channel, be at the Folk Festival. I hope to see some of you there. And in the meantime, till, till I see you again, whether it's the 6th or June or at some live event down the road, please keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch. 
Keep checking out the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, the Instagram, the Twitter, all that good stuff. Interact with me. Send me a message sometime. I love talking with the people that enjoy this content that I'm putting out there. And I hope you'll join us on the 6th. But until then, dear friends, as we always say, and how we say goodbye in Pennsylvania Dutch, till next time, Mach Scoot. Mach Scoot Suit. Mox good suit dir, Mox good suit dir for now. Unsere Zeit ist all und so es ist Mox good for now. Hoff wieder mit dir zu sein. Hoff du bringst sie rick and fried. Mox good suit dir, Mox good suit dir, Mox good suit dir for now. Unsere Zeit ist all und so, es ist Max gut von now. Hoff wieder mit dir zu sein, hoff du bringst Rick and Freund. Und so Max gut, Max gut, lieber Freund, Max gut.